The hour is 5.32. I apologize for my tardiness. It's on me today. Welcome to the uh, regular city commission meeting for today, May the 14th. The hour is 5.32. I believe we have a quorum, so I will call us to order. And I'll ask that we be led in a moment of prayer by Commissioner James Atkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you'll bow. Most gracious and all wise, we thank you once again for such a lovely spring, summertime day. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country of ours. And we thank you for this opportunity to assemble peacefully tonight at this location. We ask and pray that what we do tonight will be pleasing in thy sight. In his name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. If you rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. My fellow commissioners, uh, you have the agenda in front of you, and with any, without any further uh, input, I will assume that it meets your approval. Yes. Silence yes. gives consent. We're going to move in that section of the meeting we call here the public. This is the public's opportunity to uh, take three minutes at the podium and address any item that is on the uh, agenda for the evening. That'll be items one through nine. At, uh, at which point there will be another here to the public, which will be a public's opportunity to address any subject that is not on tonight's agenda. So with that said, is there anyone that would like uh, to take the podium on any subject that's on tonight's agenda? Going once, going twice. We'll move right on to item one, and that is the approval of the minutes of the previous Three meetings, that being April 23rd, April 26th, and May the 3rd. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Thanks, Commissioner Sears. Second by Commissioner Cottle. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, uh, like sign. Motion carries. Item two, another one of those wonderful evenings where we get to take time to acknowledge thanks, sir, um, those folks that do a, a yeoman's work for us. Um, they're always uh, there when you need them, and they're, they're there quietly behind the scenes, and, and uh, we can't say enough or do enough for them. But Chief Fluke, um, if you'll take the floor, it's yours, sir, please. Tonight we're here to recognize Lieutenant Shane Yoakum. Uh, he has served with us for well over 15 years, combination of volunteer and, and full time. Uh, he's been a really big asset and we hate to see him retire, but things happen and he, he goes on to bigger and better things, i.e. fishing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few folks who'd like to probably say something with, for you. Uh, I'd like to call, call them up. There you are. Me? Yes, please. <laughs> this, is, this is Battalion Chief McCurdy. I've have, had the privilege to serve with Shane for, well, my 12 years, his 15 years be here. And uh, we've been together on a lot of, on a lot of calls and, and really couldn't ask for a better firefighter and a better leader of the fire service. He's going to continue to do that throughout his retirement, um, serving in the capacity at the state level. Um, also, I'm here to recognize him as <clears throat> um, for his service from the Danville Professional Firefighters. He's been a founding member from the Danville Professional Firefighters and uh, has actively served with us 
with many things that we, we try to accomplish and the many things that we do on the state and, and international level as well. So I just wanted to present him with a plaque and recognize him for his service. Yeah. Before you do, let me do my thing, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your service. How much fishing are you gonna you gonna do? As much as possible. <laughs> what kind? Cropping. Cropping. Okay. This may come in handy. This is a, a knife, as you know, everybody receives this. Now I'm gonna give you some words of wisdom as a, as a as a very amateurish fisherman. Don't waste time trying to untangle or save the lure. Take the knife, cut the line, retie the lure, and go back to fishing. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, sir. And by the way, we love crappies. So any you want to get rid of, that's good eating. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. Podium's yours. That was great advice, Mayor. Yes, sir. Oh, it's been a been a kind of emotional ride. Um, being a fireman it was not just a career or a job for me. It was a way of life. Uh, my family can attest to that. Um, Thanks again to the city, the chiefs, and the opportunity and everything that you all have done for us. I'm uh, thankful for all the guys and gals that I've worked with coming up. The chiefs, be safe, guys. Gentlemen, thanks again. Mr. Mayor, yeah. family stand up. Oh, yeah. Uh, before anybody leaves, um, Lieutenant Yoakum's family, are you here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No kidding. I'm connecting some dots now. Yeah. Good to see everybody. This is my parents, my wife, and my four children. All right. Glad to have y'all. That's good. <clears throat> Next item is uh, another pleasure that I have the off, off, uh, op <clears throat> honor of presenting. This is uh, Police Officer Memorial Week. Who's coming to receive this? Come on, Chief. Proclamation for the National Police Officer Appreciation Week, May 13th through 19th, 2018. Whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and the week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week, and whereas the members of the law enforcement agency of the City of Danville play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the City of Danville and its citizens, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, the hazards, and the sacrifices of their law enforcement agency, and that members of our law enforcement agency recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the men and women of law enforcement agency of the city of Danville unceasingly provide a vital public service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor G. Michael Paris and the city commissioners of the city of Danville on this 14th day of May 2018 do hereby call upon all citizens of Danville and upon all patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 13th through the 19th, 2018. As Police Officer Appreciation Week with appropriate ceremonies and observances in which all of our people may join in commemorating law enforcement officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and, in so doing, 
have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. I further call upon all citizens of Danville to observe May 18th as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers who, through their courageous deeds, have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty. And let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our, of our fallen heroes in a ceremony to be held at Bellevue Cemetery, May the 18th, 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Chief, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chief, you say anything? <laughs> Do we need a motion to accept that proclamation? I so move. Second. We have a motion is second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. I will say that to the audience uh, in in um, in attendance that the thanks sir that the 18th uh, service on the 18th at 2:30 at Bellevue Cemetery um, is is one that's well worth your time. Uh, it's touching and it's significant. Uh, the next is the uh, Sisters, I'm uh, sorry, Proclamation for the Historic Preservation Month. Um, who's coming up from the Boyle Landmark Trust? The ubiquitous, the ubiquitous Jacob Panky. Where were you when we read this already, Jacob? Well, I didn't get my invite. <laughs> I don't do do-overs, Jacob. I got lucky. Um, whereas the pre preservation of Kentucky's historic buildings and sites is a proven economic development tool that creates jobs, attracts investment, revitalizes downtowns and neighborhoods, stimulates heritage tourism, fosters new business development, assists affordable housing, increases property values, and improves the economic climate of communities, and whereas preservation has been established as public policy under the National Historic Preservation Act, which provides the framework for the Kentucky Legislature to create the State Historic Preservation Office in late 1966. And amendments to the act in 1980 enable successful partnerships between federal, state, and local governments, and whereas the Kentucky Heritage Council slash the State Historic Preservation Office is responsible for the identification, protection, and preservation of archeological sites and historic and cultural resources throughout the Commonwealth in partnership with elected officials, community leaders, advocates, nonprofit organizations, and interested citizens, and whereas the city of Danville and heart of Danville has been a certified local government for many years in partnership with the Kentucky Heritage Council and the National Park Service, and has established historic preservation as a public policy and worked to meet federal, state, and local historic preservation objectives, and whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds, and because of the wealth of Kentucky's historic buildings, sites, structures, and places, it is important that citizens of the Commonwealth recognize and value this heritage. Now, therefore, I, Mayor G. Michael Paris, and the Board of Commissioners of the City of Danville do hereby proclaim May 2018 as Historic Preservation Month. Sir, thank you. Can I have one moment? You certainly may. Thank you, Mayor Paris. And thank you, City Commission. Uh, Got to hold that up there. All right, there we go. Mayor, I think you put it best when you said that these historic buildings are proven economic development tools for creating jobs, attractive investment, and revitalizing downtown and neighborhoods. That is why, in partnership with the City of Danville Architecture Heritage Board, Bridget, you all, the Convention and Visitors Bureau with Jennifer Kirshner, the Boyle Landmark Trust and those partners are bringing Mark McDonald, the president of the Georgia Trust, back to Danville on May 24th and 25th to discuss this exact statement that you have made in the proclamation as to how we can move forward through the revolving fund initiatives as well as other historic preservation tools and tactics. The title of this event I think is perfectly fitting. It is the tagline of the Georgia Trust itself. Reuse, reinvest, revitalize. That is what we need in our community, not just in the city of Danville. I've had, thanks to you, I 
the Boyle Landmark Trust. Now has received a proclamation from the City of Paraville, Junction City, the Boyle County Fiscal Court, and the City of Danville. All the governments in this community want historic preservation and are and encourage it. So I invite you all to the event on May 24th. It is nine to five. You can come to any of the sessions that are there. They're free and open to the public, thanks to the partnerships of this event, as well as on Friday, May 25th at eight to 10 a.m. You can have a light breakfast and, a, and an informal Q&A with Mark McDonald as well. You can register online at the Boyle Landmark Trust website. And um, I think I've covered anything else, Barbara, Pat, or any of the board. Of course, yes. <laughs> Is there any questions of the city commission of the Boyle Landmark Trust? No questions, right. comments. You guys have done a great job of uh, keeping us proud of our city. Thank you, city uh, commissioner series. <laughs> Anyone else? Questions? So. Jacob, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, city commission. Look forward to being with you on those days. <laughs> Item five is the sisters cities, uh, excuse me, we need a uh, mm -hmm. motion and a second for that proclamation. I move to accept the proclamation. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Terry and Commissioner Cottle. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, motion <clears throat> carries. Item five is the sister city uh, commission appointments that I presented uh, before you, um, those being uh, Brandon Long, who um, is soon, if he hasn't already left, is soon to, he's, there. he's, there. he's gone, he's there. <laughs> he's having a big time in Ireland. Um, <laughs> it, it's him and um, Mary Jo Bowling, as she was been vitally interested in this program since its beginning in 1989. I would entertain a motion to those appointments. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Sears. Commissioner Carter on second. Discussion? Okay. Seeing none, I call the question. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item six <clears throat> is my recommendation to you that Dan Campbell be appointed to uh, Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustments, replacing Linda Green. Linda has done a fantastic job. Uh, in that role, um, but what we always try to do on that particular slot or seat, if you will, is is rotate that amongst uh, realtors in the real estate uh, uh, industry here, and so I'm just trying to keep that circulating through. Do I hear a motion to that effect? I move uh, for approval of Dan Camel to Planning and Zoning Adjustments Board of Adjustments. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Carlo, Commissioner Terry. Discussion? So you want to call the question. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item seven is the uh, second reading of ordinance number 1912. This is the center college zone change. Um, we need a motion for that second reading or just a reading? No, I need to read it and a motion. Read. Yeah. Okay. Go right ahead, Madam Clerk. The second reading of Ordinance 1912, an ordinance changing the zone from GRA residential large lot, GRB residential small, small lot, GRC residential civic lot, NCC neighborhood conservation classification, HC highway commercial, and DT downtown to ICD institutional campus development for approximately 105.91 acres, more or less, of real property known as the campus of Center College and located generally along the following streets in Danville, Kentucky. West Main, Harding, Moores, Paraville, North Maple, South Maple, St. Mildred, Louise, McMillan, Rao, North Fifth, South Fifth, West Walnut, College, Colonel, Beatty, Russell, West Martin Luther King, Grant, and Delahaye. I move for approval of second reading of Ordinance 1912. Thanks, Commissioner Cottle. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Terry. Discussion? 
Seeing none, Madam Clerk, I'll call for the roll call vote, please. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Terry? Yes. Mayor Paris? Yes. Commissioner Cottle? Yes. Commissioner Series? Yes. Item eight is the uh, code enforcement report. Ms. Lester? Good evening, <coughs> excuse me. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Um, you have the report for the month of April before you. We had um, 61 inspections and complaints. Uh, we issued 105 parking citations. We issued um, 34 business licenses. Um, the month of May also started grass and weed season, so everyone needs to keep their grass below 12 inches. So this, uh, this report will get much bigger as the time goes on because we're getting lots of calls already, so <laughs> keeping us quite busy. Um, I put a note in your um, packet as well, just to let you know that 311 West Main Street scaffolding should hopefully be down around the 24th. They're trying to finish up the front of that, so that'll clear that sidewalk up. Um, also, if you'll note on your condemned properties list, I noted that the properties you approved last meeting for demolition um, are under contract and on schedule um, to be demolished. We're starting with 134 Wilderness and then it'll go to 206 North 1st Street, and then the third one will be 702 Perkins Avenue. So we hope to have those done by the end of May, but um, we'll keep you posted, um, depending on weather and other things, as to whether all those will get down or not. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. You went to the trouble of uh, <clears throat> pointing out one of your cases here, 125 Betsy Ross. You want to talk about that a little bit? Um, I just wanted you all to see that just in case you had heard of it or knew what was going on. But that, that property had a serious sinkhole in the back, which was compromising the foundation. So mm -hmm. we condemned it and um, removed the occupants until that could be fixed. Yeah. That so actually um, was a, a call that I took from a citizen. Um, and I just relayed it to Bridget, and I think you guys were out there the next day, mm -hmm. or if not the day. Which of. is the perfect process, you know. Just if you yeah. just sometimes yeah. we just don't we don't know about these things until we hear from someone. So, mm -hmm. yeah, please let us know. And, th and this is a great example of the work you're doing because that sinkhole is not being roped off, so it's a danger for any children or animals mm -hmm. that are wandering through that area there. And so, th that's what your mission's about. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, ma'am. If there's nothing else for Ms. Lester, we'll move right on to the city manager report. Mr. Scott? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor and <clears throat> members of the city uh, commission, just a brief comment tonight that budget work continues. Uh, you recall that I presented in detail a preliminary budget for discussion some two weeks ago. I've had a lot of interaction with the city commission members individually and received comments from uh, members of the public regarding certain aspects of that uh, proposed budget, which uh, does propose to expand in excess of $51 million during the next fiscal year. I'm continuing to work on a final proposed budget, and I plan to have that uh, for presentation to you on uh, your next regular meeting, which would be on the 29th of May here at 530, the day following the Memorial Day uh, holiday. Uh, I appreciate all the discussion we've had. It's difficult, I will say, <clears throat> in any given year to find revenue to uh, meet all needs. Uh, this attempt in this budget is to do so without uh, incurring a further tax increase. And so to balance that and to deal with the increased uh, challenges we have uh, <clears throat> in front of us to deal with pension obligations and other <clears throat> Uh, cost associated with other capital projects that we need to address, such as our uh, future uh, improvement to the uh, sewer plant and, and other things that we uh, have in front of this community, is a, uh, a difficult process. But uh, I appreciate your questions and your comments and those of the public, and uh, I will have a, a proposed budget for you that is balanced as according to law uh, on uh, the 29th. One other matter I would mention, <clears throat> we've talked uh, previously about uh, honoring um, uh, Mr. Michael Smith by sign down at uh, Bates uh, Park. Uh, there is <clears throat> the, we, we did put up a sign that needs some, some additional work to that sign to make it more weatherproof, and we're undertaking that additional work. 
uh, the alumni group of Bates uh, School is planning to be in town for an alumni uh, reunion on, uh, let's see, uh, Saturday, August the 11th. And so they are requesting that we have a dedication when all of those alumni members are present at 12 noon on that date. And so August 11th, this far in advance, hopefully everyone can uh, put that on your schedule and hopefully be in a uh, position to attend. That'd be good. So are we doing something this week? No, sir, uh, because the request earlier, we talked about uh, the possibility of doing it this week, but the group requested we postpone that dedication. And we also need to improve the sign, but we postponed it until the alumni group is in, in, town, is in town, and that would be on uh, that Saturday, August the 11th. But we don't have a time. Uh, 12 noon. Sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. Anything else, sir? No, sir. That's all for now. All right, get that down there. Okay. Uh, we are in that section, as I promised, called Hear the Public. This is the opportunity for the public to take three minutes to address any item that is not on today's agenda. So the floor is open. Um, I'm Nikki Kincaid. I'm the director at Community Arts Center, and I just wanted to thank the commission and the city for Whistaker Plaza. We had an event there on Saturday, and it was beautiful, and Earl did a fantastic job, brought that water truck out for us, and the garbage cans were kind of full, and within 10 minutes he had cleared that out for us, and it just was a wonderful event. So I thank you for the work you did with that. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Hello, my name is Gabe Heatherly. I serve the city of Danville at the fire department. I've been serving since 2012. I'm speaking to you tonight on behalf of the personnel of the fire department in regards to the recent events that has brought a statewide salary survey into the discussion and has spotlighted just how far Danville has fallen in paying its fire personnel. The first line personnel in the department, firefighter, lieutenant, and battalion chief, all fall below the 25th percentile, according to the study published by the Kentucky League of Cities. We start a new firefighter at $7.81 per hour. This is just 56 cents above minimum wage. This person is expected to meet the NFPA 1001 professional training standards. They are also expected to be or become certified an emergency medical technician, hazardous materials technician, and car seat technician on top of their professional firefighter training standards just to maintain their job. With all, with all of this training and certification, 90% of our line personnel work second jobs to make ends meet at $7.81 an hour. Danville does offer an excellent benefits package that includes family medical and dental insurance. While this is a great benefit, we see from the survey that cities our size pay an average of 88% of the health insurance premium. Because they are starting their wages higher and also have become more competitive in their insurance, they now have a higher compensation package. We are now in a situation that we are getting fewer, fewer, and fewer applicants for firefighter, and even our own part-time staff aren't applying to work in Danville. They are applying it at other departments. In 2012, we hired two full-time positions. When I tested, I attempted to count the number of people taking the test and lost count at around 80. In the most recent hiring process, we had seven. Those seven people, only four of them passed the physical agility. That left us with a candidate pool of four to hire for two positions. We are also recruiting people from further away. At this time, our average firefighter commutes 25 miles to get to, get to the fire station. This has had an effect on our off-duty response. We have always relied on off-duty personnel to bolster our staff when we have an emergency that overwhelms the on-duty on crew. With our current travel time of 30 minutes to an hour and a half, these personnel will not be able to make a positive impact during the initial response. Previously, we could depend on off-duty to respond in a timely manner and continue to allow the department to run on a skeleton crew. At seven personnel per shift, we are behind in not only the national standard, but also other departments in the Commonwealth. Other cities of around Danville size run an average of 10 frontline personnel per shift. With our current staffing at seven, we are already behind when the emergency starts. We are responding to more and more runs than ever before. 
Although our staffing level has stayed the same, we have increased in volume of responses that we make as well as maintaining the non-emergency work we do, such as Christmas lights and hydrants and CPR training. In 2013, we responded to 776 emergencies. 2017, we responded to 1,751. This is a 225% increase. We can see the toll that this responses take on the lives of our personnel, both at work and at home. We are a group of people who love to serve. We are public servants at heart and realize this is a tough decision. We are simply asking that you try to get our pay schedule up to a level that is competitive and look at getting us to an average level of staffing so that we may better serve the city of Danville. Thank you, sir, for Thank your you. comments. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chase Broach, lifelong resident and second generation police officer for the city of Danville. My family is deeply rooted in service to the city as my father continues to serve as a codes officer with almost 38 years of experience and my mother too is employed by the city. I'm here tonight to ask, when, we re when will we receive our pay raise to bring us into the 75th percentile? We have seen the salary survey and we know that we too are underpaid like the commission and mayor. We have been following the vote closely on the ordinance and paying close attention to the reason for the raises even closer. Our goal tonight is create a conversation in hopes that a timeline can be established for all employees to receive an adjustment to rate of pay and create a structured pay scale ensuring you will be rewarded for staying with the city. Like Mayor Perro said when making the motion to approve the ordinance, this commission has chosen to face the facts and not kick the can down the road. Here at the police department, we cannot kick the can any further or any longer. Salaries need to be adjusted so that we can retain people that we have to prepare for the future. City Manager Ron Scott proposed the raises uh, based on the, the adjustments had not been made since 2006. In addition to not only helping the commission and mayor because of lack of adjustments, we need to reward the city employees who stayed here when there were no raises in 2008, 2009, and 2010. Mr. Scott also uses a salary survey as evidence in his recommenda recommendation saying the current salaries of elected officials is very low compared to relative, uh, excuse me, relative salaries paid by comparable cities, and this will raise them into the 75th percentile. So where does the police department fall? According to the survey, DPD is just $300 above the minimum for cities our size. I can tell you that with almost 12 years of experience at the police department, I am over $2,000 away from the 50 percentile and $11,000 behind the survey's 75 percentile for starting pay. Please don't let the city of first be last in pay. Thank you for your time and please remember us as we look to spend money on new positions in the city, mountain bike trails, streetscaping, wayfinding signs, and etc. We make public service a priority. Please make serving the public servants a priority. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Adam Wilson. I'd like to start off by saying that we appreciate the opportunity to stand in front of you and speak tonight. I was hired in 2015 as a police officer here in Danville, and right now I make the commute from Russell Springs, which is about an hour drive. I chose Danville for a number of different reasons, but what I've learned since being an officer here is that we really do have a great department, an excellent group of men and women who are good at what they do, and we care about the people that we protect. It's frustrating to see these men and women leave this department and go to other agencies because of money. Agencies that are similar in size and population to Danville, offering the same benefits, but yet offer a substantial increase in pay. I do believe that an increase in pay for our officers will result in much better employee retention, as well as better quality of applicants who want to be police officers. My wife and I would love to live in the area, but are forced to look at properties in neighboring counties instead of Bull County. This is mainly due to the lack of money that I make working for the city of Danville. We simply cannot afford property nearby, and I will continue to drive an hour to come to work. With that being said, I congratulate the City Commission on their recent pay raise into the 75th percentile in the state of Kentucky. We would all love to see our police officers get the same treatment. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good 
Good evening. My name is Patrick McQueen, and I've been a police officer with the city of Danville for over 19 years. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, I congratulate the city commission, Mr. Mayor, on uh, your salary adjustments. We commend Mr. Scott uh, for being uh, very uh, advantageous and frank in his efforts to try to bring that into appropriate scale and make sure that that's actually equitable for you in the time that you dedicate and that you serve uh, this community with. So uh, we do appreciate that and we commend that forward thinking on Mr. Scott's behalf. Um, we do hope as, uh, as has been expressed here already that you'll continue to think about the public safety and public workers who do dedicate so much of their lives and time to this community to the needs of the community, to the to administrations, businesses, organizations that we serve uh, from up to the most life-threatening thing to making sure we place cones for events. And we hope that you'll keep us in your mind and find a prompt way to adjust those things. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Todd Davis. I'm also a police officer here with the city of Danville. I'm a hometown boy, just like Chase, just like Chief Gray. And because of that, I've got a little bit more invested in this than the average person that works here. I've spent 19 years of my life with this department and I'm proud of it. I enjoy serving the citizens of this fine community and it's with a heavy heart that 13 months from now, I will go ahead and retire and go on to a different career. Um, I admit that this is a little personal for me because we're, it, this is Danville. And when you say the words Danville, that means something. And when I first started here, it did mean something because this is, where, this is the agency where everybody wanted to come and work. The reputation that we have now is we're an agency that trains every other agency's police officers. And quite honestly, we're better than that. We are Danville and we are better than that. I have all the faith that Mr. Mayor, the commissioners, Mr. Scott, that you guys will help us rectify this so that we once again are the agency that everyone wants to come and work for. We're Danville, we're better than that. These men and women that I work with are better than that. These firefighters that I've worked my entire career with, they deserve theirs and they're better than that. We are all in this together. So I ask you and I have faith in you that you will rectify this because again, and I can't emphasize this enough, we're Danville and we're better than that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, my name is Ben Ray. Um, I've been with the police department since 2015. Um, I was born and raised in Danville. Um, I went to Alice Lloyd College in Pippa Passes and had a chance to become a police officer there, but wanted to come back to my hometown uh, to give back to a community that has given so much back to me. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat as uh, Mr. Adam Wilson over there. Um, when I first decided that I was going to look for a place to stay, obviously I wanted to stay in Danville. It's the only place that I've ever known. Um, my entire family is in Danville. Um, unfortunately, due to my pay scale and, and the cost of property in Danville, I was unable to do that, and I had to move to a neighboring community. Um, I would just like, you know, like Chase said, you know, it, it's our time. You know, we're, we're losing guys head over heel. I'm a three-year officer and I have 13 people below me. There's not another department in the state where you can go up to a three-year officer and ask them if they have 13 people behind them, excluding Kentucky State Police, Louisville, and Lexington Metro. It's time that we start keeping people and instead of training people and sending them on to other agencies to keep them so we can better ourselves as a department and as a city. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners, my name is Robert Ladd. I've had the opportunity to read the 2018 survey prepared by the Kentucky League of Cities. I first of all would like to personally commend the Danville City Government for utilizing such an important survey to begin the process of bringing the City of Danville into a competitive wage market. I look forward to the rest of the City's employees being raised into the 75th percentile like the Danville City Government officials. 
It is my hope that in doing so, we can start to build longevity within the police department. I recently had the opportunity to see the complete roster of the police department. I was amazed when I started compiling data from that roster. 40% of our whole police department, from chief to the guy that we don't even know that we're gonna hire yet, has less than two and a half years experience, 40%. 63% of our officer staff, solely the officers, I've excluded sergeants, captains, the core group of men and women that are on the street daily, 63% of those officers have less than two and a half years. Out of the officer staff, 27% of our staff hasn't even been trained yet. They're in the academy and they're varying stages of, of being trained or they're not even hired yet, 27%. Now I know that this is a process and I am encouraged because you have placed validity in the Kentucky League of Cities study as evidenced by your restructuring of the city government's wage scale. I thank you for the foresight to make these changes in your ability to continue to work hard to position this city for the future. I read in the paper that it was quoted that we cannot continue to kick the can down the road. I couldn't agree more. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, Danville is the city of firsts. Let's all work hard to bring everyone within the 75th percentile, police, fire, public works, all the other entities within the city of Danville needs to work toward the 75th percentile. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee. My name's uh, Aaron Sparks. I've been at the police department approximately two years, so I'm fairly new, fairly young. Um, the biggest thing I've learned since I've been here is I work with probably some of the best officers in the state. They're so committed to this job that they sacrifice time away home from their families. I do it myself. Um, I sacrifice time for my wife, for my family, and they do the same. And they commit themselves to make sure this city is safe and is the city of first. So I just wish that you consider um, the raises that should be comparable throughout the state to us. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lisa Dollins. I also work for the city as a police officer. I have been on the force for eight years now and I'm a detective. Um, I just wanted to point out that my husband uh, actually used to work for us too. He left to go through another academy, to start at the bottom, to have a new schedule, and that he is never home now, um, to make more money. And he makes more money than I do as an eight-year officer his first year at KSP. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Paul McGilligan. I'm also an officer. Um, I just want to get up here and brag a little bit about the city of Danville, kind of tell something personal to me. Um, I actually appreciate the city quite a bit. It's given me very, very, very many opportunities just from living in this area. The people that I've grown to know from teachers, coaches, family, friends, based on them, they've impacted my life in a tremendous way. Um, that's one of the reasons why I chose this job and why I chose to work here. In my interview when I was hired, that was one of the questions posed to me. Why Danville? Why do you want to be a police officer in Danville? And, and that's part of the reason is because I respect this community so much because of what it's done for me that I chose to, that this would be a good way to give back to that community. Um, to reiterate, I love this community. Me and my wife just recently purchased a home and we looked everywhere in the city of Danville, everywhere in Bull County, similar to some of these other other younger guys that are starting a family, starting a life, um, and we were unable to afford living in this community. And we were forced to move to one of the surrounding counties. And 
I congratulate you all on your all's raise and moving to the 75th percentile, and I just hope you all keep us in mind so that we can we can get to that 75th percentile so that maybe in the future I can, uh, can afford to live in this great community that I love so much. Thank you all. Thank you. My name is Brandon Klein. I've been a police officer here for the city of Danville for about six years now. I love this city. I'm a uh, Danville graduate, graduated 2008, and I've been serving since I came out of college here since 2012. Uh, and I joined the police department. We were trained for all sorts of things, for shootouts, pursuits, fights, everything. And uh, there's been a new emerging threat lately with the uh, drug use of needles in particular. Um, you know, a lot of times I go on a lot of calls and I'll take people down and take them into jail, custody, and they'll have needles in their pocket. You know, a lot of these people that I do arrest have using dirty needles, and so the threat of catching hepatitis, AIDS, HIV, or other bloodborne illnesses is very high. And it's also become a much more dangerous state. I can't tell you how many times you open up the news now and see where officers have been executed for eating lunch in public now. Now I realize that chance of that happening here is very slim. But the chance of bringing bloodborne diseases home is, is not. Uh, there have been several times where I've been contaminated with bed bugs and had had showered and decontaminated, and it's not a pleasant experience. Um, jumping back ship here now, I know a lot of officers have come up here and talked about how they love the community and stuff, and it applies to me too. I love this town. I've had nowhere else I want to be. In fact, I've actually made the sacrifice to make sure that my family can grow up here. I've just recently bought a house here in the city of Danville and we're looking very forward to moving. Unfortunately, in order to afford that house, I work an average of 800 to 1,000 hours of overtime a year in order to afford it. I would have pleased that you would, if you could adjust the pay scale in any way to help us officers so we can get more officers to stay here and not work so I can spend more time with my son. I'd appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. For those of you who I've not had the opportunity to meet, my name is Jacob Ruey, and I too am a police officer here at the city of Danville. First off, I would like to congratulate each of you, city commissioners, mayor, on your recent pay increase. I believe that it is very, you are very deserving of that based on your diligence and hard work and ensuring that Danville is a great place to work and live. As you've probably noticed, this room is also filled with people who work diligently to not only ensure that Danville is a great place to work and live, but these people ensure, ensure that Danville is a safe place to work and live, oftentimes placing themselves in harm's way to do so. Now I just ask that you will remember these people who make such great sacrifices and continue the conversation of allowing us to join in with the 75th percentile. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Gentlemen, ladies. Uh, I hadn't really planned on saying anything tonight. Uh, my name's Gary Hunter. I uh, retired from the city of Danville at the fire department. Uh, I came here in 1997 and retired in 2014. Um, it hadn't been for a, a and an injury that I had received on, on the job, I probably would have worked longer. Unfortunately, that uh, changed matters. Uh, I was talking to one, or listening to one of the police officers here earlier. He said, and Todd Davis, um, he reminded me of something years ago when I came here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I looked around at some of the guys that I worked with here. There's not many of them left. Um, there's about five total. And the police officers, maybe four at the most that I've, that I've known through my whole career here. And all of them that, that I see now, I, I hear these guys talking about, uh, they're, they're, they're coming here, they're, uh, they have their families, they have their job, they're trying to pay their bills. Uh, they're, they're, they're not making it. Uh, just like with, with us, with the fire department, there's not a firefighter here who doesn't have a part-time job somewhere. You know, we work 24, 48, so we had, we had to do something. Uh, these guys, they don't have the, um, 
the opportunity or the luxury of doing that because they work five, I guess five, six days a week, however their schedule is, eight, ten hours a day. I'm not really familiar with that, but uh, I can understand why a lot of them leave. Um, if, you, um, if you come in somewhere and, and if, if you come to work with the company that I'm with now, we give you a job and we start you out at a certain amount of money um, and you on down the road, you realize, hey, you know what? I can go over and work for this guy doing my same job and, and I'm getting $4 more on the hour or $6 more on the hour, a little better benefits. Not everybody can give everything that, that you would like to have, but there, there is some give and take. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what all I want to say here. Uh, I can tell you that uh, um, Gabe was talking about the starting salary. After the 18 years that I was here when I left, I was making 10.41 an hour. Um, that's after 18 years. Uh, that's that's not a lot of money. Uh, I did not uh, achieve any officer's position. I preferred to be a firefighter and be on the truck. That was my choice. But after 18 years, you'd think there'd be a little more than that. Yes, you guys do have a good benefit package, and, and that's one of the things that entices people to come here and work, and that is understandable because we all know that insurance is high, and any type of insurance, doesn't matter what it is, you pay a lot for it. You guys do have a good package there. However, I think it could be changed a little bit. Um, I was also thinking earlier, if, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without really insulting anybody. And, and right. of course, being a firefighter, it doesn't really, an old <laughs> firefighter, you don't really care about that. <laughs> but um, when, you, when you pick a position as a commissioner, um, if you're in the county, uh, you choose to become a magistrate, something like that. To me, a position like that is something that you choose to do because you look out there and you see that there is a problem in your community or there's something in your community that you want to do. You want to make better. You want to help the people. You don't do it because of the fact that, hey, I can go in here and I can be a city commissioner or, or wh whatever position it is for X amount of dollars. That's not the reason you chose that. Yes, we all need to get money. Everybody needs to get paid for what they do. I, th I think that's only fair. Uh, but to me, if in a position like that, if I, ever, if I were in a position like that, I would look not only at where I'm at, but everybody that it pertains to all the way down the line. I don't care if it's the police officers, if it's the fire department, if it's the city workers, the guys who take care of the streets, the water, everything. Because without all of those people, this city has nothing. I'm not, I'm not from Danville. I'm not from Boyle County. I currently live in Boyle County. I'm from Jessamine County originally. Uh-oh, got his attention there on that one. Um, I lived in Gary County when I came here to the fire department. I had an opportunity to go to other departments, but I chose Danville. The reason I chose Danville, because I liked it. I liked the people here. I liked the people within the department. Didn't know any of them when I came here, nobody. I knew nobody in Danville when I came to work here. But I can say that I've made some really awesome friends, great co-workers. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the co-workers that I came up with have either passed on, um, unfortunately, or they've all retired. I see a lot of the new guys here, uh, the, the police officers, the, the firefighters, and the first thing I want to do is ask them what time their curfew is because they look so young. <laughs> and there, there's nothing wrong with that until you really look at it and you wonder why do we have all these young people. Where's that 40, 45, 50 year old police officer? There's not many of them in here, very few. Same thing with the firefighters. When you've got a firefighter who just barely has enough training to be on the truck, but yet he is the sixth man on that truck and there should be a minimum of seven or eight, there's a problem that needs to be addressed. I'm not saying that you guys can go out here and start writing checks. I don't know the budget. I don't, uh, I don't have a clue about any of that. 
but I think it really needs to be addressed, and I think we need to look at all the people in here, all the people that work for the city. I'm not saying that you didn't deserve what you got, okay? By no means, I would never say that. But I think that if what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and if you wanna keep everybody happy, and you wanna keep it built up, you don't have a big turnover, you wanna keep your employees, that's what you need to do. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hunter, thanks for your comments. You said it wasn't prepared, but it was, and I appreciate that. Uh, you said a whole lot in three minutes. I'm not supposed to respond to that, but uh, no you saw my eyes light up when you said Jessamine County, didn't you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? I just wanted to let you know that we were still trying to um, fill spaces at our welcome tent for brass band. Anybody in the audience or commissioners on Saturday from 1 to 4 and Saturday from 7 to 10. We're still looking for some volunteers. What's the date? Oh. June 1st. <laughs> brass band weekend. Doesn't everybody know when brass band is? <laughs> I know, but I just want, you know. Sure Friday is the knows. first. Saturday is the second. June 2nd. <laughs> Smarty. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move into Commissioner Comments. And, and I'd love to start before you all leave. Yeah, right. I, I worked with the Jenny Carroll race this weekend, um, started the race, did the finish, and I want to compliment our Danville Police Force for being out there and taking care of the roads. For, you guys did a great job. Thank you very much. Well, I, I, I wasn't prepared to say anything either, but I'm going to... Uh, I blame it all on Mr. Hunter and everybody else who came to the microphone. Uh, been at this position, it'll be eight years in December. Uh, and Mr. Hunter, you're right, it never has been about the money. It's been about trying to serve and make this community better. And uh, two weeks ago, we probably made one of the hardest decisions we've made since sitting here. And that was to do, you all keep saying the 75 percentile, so I'll use your analogy. But it, it was tough. and. Uh, when we, when we deal with the budget, every face that we know that gets, uh, puts on that uniform and serves our community in whatever capacity it is, uh, you have our highest uh, respect. And yes, we will take a look, like we always take a look at what we can do with salaries and benefits. Uh, that's me talking personally. Uh, I was uh, the third person on the vote. It was a 3-2 split. Uh, have I lost any sleep about doing that? Can't honestly say I have. I'd be lying to you if I told you I did, but I haven't, uh, because it was tough. But once I make a decision that I think is best for us and best for this community, I'm man enough to stick by it, okay? And we will be man enough and woman enough to stick by the decisions we make in regards to the police department and the fire department and everybody else that's an employee of the city. And that's supposed to be a compliment. It may not sound like one, but it's a compliment. Be sure you understand that as a compliment, because I do respect your service. Uh, I was certainly not prepared for any remarks, and I'm not sure that this is the uh, best of times to make those remarks, but it may be the only time um, to, to share my thoughts. When I campaigned four years ago, <clears throat> there were four things that I, that I campaigned on. One of them was improving our staffing at our police department, because I knew that we didn't have enough bodies here because too many people were having to work too much overtime. We focused on that and we have fulfilled largely that need in terms of personnel. Rome wasn't built in a day. We have been walking a financial tightrope here for four years that I've been here and we've had to uh, undertake some unpleasant um, tax increases just to get us to this point in time. And we still aren't where we need to be, not only as evidenced by what we know, but as evidenced by what you feel and, and you know. And we understand that. We hear that loud and clear. Um, as somebody who has uh, taken particular interest in law enforcement, 
has been a two-time graduate of the Danville Police Academy, has had numerous ride-alongs. Um, I, I, am, I am vitally interested in what you all uh, do uh, and the conditions under which you do it. Um, so I hear you, uh, we hear you, we understand. Um, for several years, uh, we have undertaken numerous conversations on how we can restructure uh, compensation so that it meets the needs of officers from the young person walking in fresh out of the academy to the 20-year uh, veteran who, who's got a family. Those are two distinctly different situations. Those are two d distinctly um, different situations from the officer's point of view, be it, be it man or woman. Um, and we're going to be addressing some uh, flexibility uh, in the near future uh, in order to address that. Um, again, I, I wasn't prepared to make the remarks that, that I just shared with you, um, but I'm glad I took the opportunity to share them with you. I appreciate you sharing your, opportunity, your, your remarks with us. Um, they're, they're, unfortunately, uh, there's nothing that you said tonight that we didn't already know, um, but fortunately, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we can have this kind of dialogue. We can share our sentiments with each other, and believe it or not, we are on the same team. We are on the same team. So um, give us time, and we will, get, we will get closer to where we need to be. Anything else? I was just going to say, and I've said it before, um, we can't pay you what you're worth. There is no way. Um, but I hope you'll give us an opportunity to um, make it better to retain officers at the rate we need to retain them and keep the experience here and uh, get you guys moving in town and a few of the things you mentioned. Um, you don't know me from Adam probably, but I'm going to have to ask you to trust us, trust me that we're going to work on that. And I know I've had this conversation with Mr. Scott recently, and it's uh, so I know it's foremost on his mind. Um, so I'll just echo the mayor's statements and give us time to work on it. We're doing it sooner rather than later. Anything else? Seeing not, we'll move to item number 10. This is the payment of the bills, which you have in front of you in the amount of 900,615.80. Do I hear a motion to accept payment of the bills? I'll make a motion to pay the bill list dated May the 14th, 2018, amount of $900,515.80. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Atkins, second by Commissioner Cardle. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 11 is the resolution number 2018-05-14-01. This is a cemetery lot buyback from the vests. Donna? We just asked your approval to buy the two lots back from the vest in the amount of $1,500. And that'd be Ben and Joyce vest. Ben and Joyce vest. Move for approval of resolution 2018-05-1401. Second. Thanks, Commissioner Connell. Commissioner Terry, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 12 <clears throat> is the uh, Bunny Davis pool opening date. Mr. Coffey. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, we would like to just point out because we usually get the question about this time of year the pool's been uh, repainted refurbished a little bit this this spring and it looks like we're in good shape to to open where I think uh, Parks and Rec will intends to fill the pool this weekend or, or maybe they already started yeah Sunday they started actually now that I think about that but um, so we're in good shape and uh, we painted the deck painted trim did some concrete repairs filled in the old uh, what was the hot tub that was off to the side and, and did some repairs to the kiddie pool. And uh, so we're in good shape and wanted to provide that update. Is it holding water? <laughs> Today it is, yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Biggie, right? 
<laughs> Item 13, Resolution 2018-05-14-02. This is a paving list. Continue, Mr. Coffey. Thank you again. You have in front of you the 2018 <coughs> spring paving list. It's fairly extensive. There's 22 streets on it. Uh, We'd we'll be happy to read those if you would like. Otherwise, we can publish those on the city's website and uh, make the list available for the newspaper. Um, the, the total tonnage is about 4,000 uh, tons. Uh, we estimate it to, to be about uh, $320,000 uh, based on the final tonnage. That number will go up or down. I know we've provided a, a precise number, but that, that won't be precise. It'll be plus or minus a few tons. And so, uh, uh, it should be about $320,000 for the spring paving list, and we hope to get started on that next week. Earl, what's our total budget for paving? It, it's, it, it's a little bigger this year um, than uh, uh, what it traditionally is. We, we spend somewhere between, based on receipts for the Minnesota Road Fund, somewhere between three and 400000 in paving. So this year. is the majority of that? Uh, this is more than that in the year we're in. We're yeah. spending a little more than that this year. We used money from the general fund to supplement that. We're spending around $500,000, and then we upped that just a little bit because we didn't get to the to the <clears throat> the bridge, so we had some money in there that we could spend. So, And while pay, uh, asphalt was still on the state bid contract, we wanted to go ahead and take advantage of that because it's leaving that and spend a little extra money. And the bridge is in this upcoming budget, correct? Yeah, we moved it yeah. to, it's, it's been split now between the two budgets. Okay. Yeah, the bridge is out to bid now, and uh, we would hope the repairs occur this summer, late this summer. Okay. <clears throat> Do I have a motion for the resolution? Sure, I'll move to accept resolution number 2018 05 Second. Thanks, Commissioner Sears. Second by Mr. Atkins, if you don't care. What's that? Second by Commissioner Atkins, if you don't care. Oh, that's fine. Is that right? <laughs> I don't care either. E even distribution here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, resolution 2018-05-14-03. This is the Corporate Drive Waterline Bid Award. Continue, Mr. Coffey. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, as you are aware, the city has developed a project to extend water from the termination of Corporate Drive uh, over to Perival Road along Hughes Lane, connecting that to a proposed uh, water line from the bypass near Bob Allen's uh, used car lot out to the west uh, along Perival Road uh, to a future tank site. The uh, project is broken up into multiple phases because of the funding sources. Please recall you've got an EDA grant, and they also have some r remnant rural development money from the uh, construction of the water plant. Uh, the project as, as bid was phase one and two, as referenced on the, the uh, drawing I gave you in your packet. Phase one um, was the essentially the 16-inch water line from the bypass out to Hughes Lane and then connecting that to the corporate drive portion. That is uh, partnership there is with the EDA grant. That project was was low. The same bidder was low on each project. Uh, the, the low bidder there was Hubert Excavating, who we ha have had a history with. His price for that work was 735000 Phase two is the, going beyond that location at Hughes Lane and Perival Road to the west uh, to Caldwell or Cowell, um, and it would be to the just to the uh, west side of that intersection, which is the south side of Perival Road where uh, Cowell comes into Perival Road. <laughs> So that's the termination point of phase two. The cost of that work is $309,899.68. Uh, we do have a little bit more money and we are working out the extension of that water line further to the west till we run out of money basically, which is what we're required to do. And uh, so there will be a future discussion about the, the ultimate termination of that as we get past this initial award. Um, there was multiple bidders on each project. The, as no, noted in the uh, bid tabs um, that was, were also attached, the uh, uh, cost for Hubert was well below the engineer's estimate. Uh, when you combine the two, it's below the engineer's estimate of about seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. So staff is comfortable with this considering we had multiple bids on both projects 
and would recommend to the commission that you adopt the resolution and award the project to the low bidder Hubert Excavating Phase 1 and Hubert Excavating Phase 2 and the dollar amounts identified on the resolution, which are $735,000 for Phase 1 and $309,899.68 for Phase 2. Do I hear a motion, Commission? I offer a motion to approve resolution 2018 05 14 02. Second. Motion been made by Commissioner Atkins, second by Commissioner Terry. Discussion? <clears throat> well, these both are well up under our estimates, estimated costs. That's a good thing. And uh, you have confidence in this company that's uh, receiving the low bids? Absolutely, yeah. Yes, sir. That's, that's great. They, they've had that. Uh, factually, they've had successful work with the city before. They did the 12-inch water line out Stanford Road to the to the county line, tur turned into reduced down to an 8-inch line as it got to the intersection of the old road. Uh -huh. And uh, so we they, they were ahead of schedule. Um, they did the water line then on around to the airport road water tower. That was an 8-inch line. So we, we have had uh, luck with this contractor. They have been very competitive in their pricing before. The fact that they were low, much lower uh, than the second bidder doesn't surprise us at all. And we were excited whenever they picked up plans and, and uh, we felt like that we would get some good pricing once uh, they were, it was made known they were going to be a bidder. Wow. That's great. Yep. So we have motion and seconding for the discussion. Seeing none, Chair, call the question. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 15 is resolution 2018-05-14-04. This is the uh, fire truck equipment and labor bid award. Chief Luke. Yes, Mayor, commissioners, before you have resolution uh, that deals with the equipping of the new fire truck coming in, and we received two bids. One we rejected because it did not meet specifications. Therefore, we recommend that you approve Finley Fire uh, doing business as Bluegrass Fire Equipment award the bid of $53,671.53. Do you hear a motion? <clears throat> Move for approval of resolution 2018-051404. Second. Thank you, Mr. Cardinal. Second by Commissioner Sears. Discussion? I have a question. On uh, the one bidder actually failed to meet the specs on 41 of the 63. <laughs> that's like. That's not even trying. That's not even trying. <laughs> it's like you want a pickup truck and they, they price you out a Miata or something. That's yeah, just. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That was very disappointing. Uh, have we worked with them before? No, we have not. Do you plan on working with them again? In, unless they meet our specs. <laughs> It also is noted that, uh, that that not everybody that bid made, met all the specifications. How, how does that make you feel? How do you deal with that, that they didn't meet all your specifications? A lot of it had to do with communications on types and specific equipment model numbers and such, whereas there will be some clarification and cleaning up of the document when we award it. The, the, the winning bid will actually finish up and we'll meet our meet our specifications when it's done. They will meet them for this this price, the 53? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Call for okay, the we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, yes sir. No, I'm, I'm ready. To, yeah. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 16 is municipal order number 05-14-01-2018. Uh, this is the revision of liability insurance requirements. Councilor Dexter. Thank you, Mayor. City Commissioners. <clears throat> uh, City Manager may want to chime in on some of the history. I'm happy to give a brief overview. If I miss something, I'm sure he'll let me know or jump in the conversation. After we passed uh, a resolution that was, I believe, in uh, March of this year due to the recognition that there was not a standard policy that was regarding what types of insurance that individuals or 
companies or groups had to have when they rented city-owned facilities. And through that process, uh, we created the municipal order which you passed um, with our recommendations on certain limits. Since that time, as it's been in effect for a couple of months or six weeks at least, it came to our attention that to, pro to get a million dollars worth of alcohol liability insurance was not cost prohibitive, but the limits that we set were $2 million, and to get that extra million was actually quite costly. Um, when it was our understanding that it would not be initially, that extra million dollars in coverage for the Community Arts Center was gonna cost to the tune of about $1,500 extra, if my memory serves me right. And so upon a review of those limits with the city's um, insurance advisor, Ed Johnson Pullman, um, they concluded that they thought the a million dollar policy was sufficient for the type of liability exposure that the city would have. And so the municipal order in front of you will revise and replace the one that's nearly two months old, setting the limits for single day events at a million dollars per occurrence and a million dollars in the aggregate for general liability coverage, as well as for multiple events, a thousand dollars per occurrence or two million dollars aggregate for general liability insurance, and then having a million dollars of alcohol coverage a million per occurrence and in the aggregate in the event that that is applicable. We're happy to answer any questions and if the city manager feels he needs to add anything to that by all means. Do I have a motion? Sure, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, new municipal order number 05 Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Well, I want to make a comment. I appreciate you responding to those folks that were going to be pretty heavily burdened here and is probably going to affect some of our businesses and we're trying to, you know, promote our city, so I appreciate that. Um, is this primarily just dealing with alcohol served at events? Because I think last time I went through it, I was concerned about birthday parties and, and that sort of stuff. <laughs> sure, I mean, well, it's in place for any city-owned facility that is leased. So that doesn't necessarily include the, a shelter at Millennium Park for a birthday party or okay. family reunion or something of that nature. But if you're actually renting a city-owned space and hosting a facility and inviting guests of you know, a sizable amount, then this policy would apply. Does this affect uh, sidewalk seating for restaurants? And if it does, how, how so? I, that, I, I, that question was asked. I don't believe it's <clears throat> the written intent of this municipal order to um, address the potential liability of sidewalk cafes who are not involved in the alcohol uh, consumption business the, uh, because it talks about, it applies in the uh, instances where uh, city facilities are um, rented or leased. And if you are having a business in town where you have a alcohol uh, sales, you have to get a permit for that and provide the liability insurance. Now, if you simply have a um, table or seating outside of, say, of a restaurant that doesn't sell alcohol or just outside a coffee shop, while liability may in fact be present on the city, uh, we're not requiring them to submit a application to lease that sidewalk. So I guess by not requiring that, it does not apply to those situations. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Un unequivocally, no, it doesn't apply to sidewalk seating. Even um, if there is alcohol? No, no, because it's not, it's not a city on leased space. Uh, we would consider this more in tune uh, or more applicable to special events. Um, but not an ongoing continue use unless it was something for, you know, obviously like the, uh, the ice skating rink at Whisker Park for a month in duration or six weeks, however long that was. I mean, certainly that would apply, um, but it, it was not the intention and I don't think it would fall within the scope of the order to have, um, to have it applicable to sidewalks. Bridget, you didn't agree with that? 
Yeah, that's well. That, with all due respect, Mayor, this I mean, it. I think it's a legal question. I think management can take with that. I mean, I appreciate Bridget's uh, work on it, but the, we well, have. I just want to make sure because there needs to be clarification here. Uh -huh. Well, when if if I asked, I mean, I would say unequivocally, it does not apply. Period to the to having sidewalk or seating on sidewalks where alcohol is served. In those instances, you have um, those businesses are going to already have commercial general liability insurance and already have uh, liquor liability insurance. The city is probably not a named insured on that policy, but it would be highly doubtful that the city would incur liability in those situations. Then with that said, I'm going to assume that um, we're, we're going to take your policy and whatever needs to occur from you down through the management ranks, that's the way it's going to be. I'm giving you my interpretation of the policy tonight, and, I, and when asked, I would say that it does not apply to any merchant or retail establishment selling alcohol um, that has a sidewalk permit to do so, period. We would have to change that by ordinance if we wanted to, um, to make it applicable to them, but this municipal order governs only the actions of city employees. A municipal order cannot govern the action um, or rules of citizens in general. That has to be done by ordinance. So by its very type of document that you're passing, it cannot add a requirement to retail establishments downtown. Well, again, the uh, general premise of the municipal order is to apply in instances where space is rendered or leased. You know, if you have an application to lease a city facility, be it the ice rink, or be at the community arts center or be at some other place where you basically are inviting a special group in yeah. then i believe it does apply uh if not it does not apply well and nice. the ordinance that bridget just brought you know to my attention i mean it it does in fact say that i mean if you have a liquor license and you have to have insurance with the cities and additional insurance. So, I mean, it would already fall under that insurance. This would not change that requirement whatsoever. And it can't be by municipal order. It only, municipal orders, by definition, only govern actions of city employees, period. They can't provide uh, rules and regulations for those um, just general businesses. We, we, we simply want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. Understand. Yeah, I think I've made my position clear on it, though. Thank you. I think we made our position clear, too. <laughs> all right, we've got a motion and a second. Any further conversation? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Mayor, I'm sorry, unless I missed I believe you needed a motion and a second. Um, I, ma I made the motion. You did. And there was a second. Yeah. Maybe. Do you know who gave it? Maybe I need oh, to speak louder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, Commissioner Sears made the motion. Commissioner Cottle made the second. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, item 17 is resolution number 2018-05-14-05. This is the approval of the quick claim deed relative to the Danville Board of Education. Counselor, you can make this one quick. I'll do my best. I have very large maps here that might make this. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview, and if it doesn't make sense, I'll show you the maps, okay? <laughs> Um, essentially, a brief history lesson, the city's chamber of commerce in the 40s and 50s served in a, a similar role to um, economic development, industrial foundation, something of that nature. And in that instance, the, the chamber of commerce owned um, for business development a chunk of land off of Houstonville Road where the Red Wing Shoe Factory is and where Mayor G. Hogs at Elementary School is. The city um, lured Genesco um, to make shoes here and that factory was, was built on land that was owned by the city and leased by Genesco and from a 1950 lease. The city off conveyed property for the building of Mary G. Hogs at Elementary School and Genesco continued to operate on what was thought to be 7.8 acres. They executed their right, uh, or their option to purchase it later down the road, and at that time, a survey was done, and it was determined in the 90s that it was actually just, it was a half acre, it was actually six point some odd acres as opposed to the 7.8. The difference in that acreage was about a 50 foot wide section 
um, including Waveland Avenue and on the Mayor G. Hogsett school property. So at that time, the city shored up the deed to give the six point some odd acres to Genesco, now Red Wing Shoe Factory. But that additional 50 foot wide section on Hogsett Elementary School, nothing was ever done and conveyed it to the Danville Board of Education. Well, things are never a problem until they're a problem, and now they're a problem. Um, the, where Danville Schools has, is about to do substantial renovation to um, Hogs Elementary School, it was determined through that surveying work that they didn't own that actual 50-foot strip where they need to put uh, an entrance. And it's not the first entrance, it's the second entrance on Waveland that kind of goes in front of the school. And the new location of a driveway will be somewhere in that general vicinity. The Kentucky um, Department of Education obviously won't allow the school board to improve land it does not own in fee simple, even if it is a drive. So therefore, um, it potentially holds up their project without the city quick claiming the deed to that 50 foot um, wide strip saying the city does not have any interest in it. And it was just a surveying error from the 50s um, as to why it was not included in their original deed. So do I have a motion? Uh, I move to approve resolution 2018-05-1405. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Terry. Second by Commissioner Carl. Further discussion? I need to make sure the record uh, shares that I'm uh, considered a part-time employee of the Denver City Schools, so I'll be abstaining from voting on this issue. I believe, that, I believe I learned today that Robert Rule's order says we can't abstain. It'll just reflect that you did not vote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll let you do it anyway. <laughs> and or your vote doesn't count, so. <laughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. And uh, just for the notation of the commission, there will be one other issue part two relating to this survey that we hope to bring before you at the next meeting which deals with factory lane um, again in an attempt that is not a city-owned street at the current time it was actually a private road of Genesco's factory street so the one that goes between the service station there or whatever Kintari mm -hmm. and um, Red Wing that is actually a private road and so the next motion before you um, will be a, a dedication or resolution, a de rededication of factory and possibly a portion of, of Waveland that may not be wholly owned by the city, but we're gonna make it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why are, you, why are you in the land grab? In the, in the interest of We're doing some pretty good bartering here, aren't we? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Scott, I believe that we have need for an executive session tonight. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We have a request for an executive session for the two purposes of talking uh, uh, about uh, personnel matters and uh, also uh, concerning property acquisition. Do I hear a motion that we move into executive session? No motion. Go ahead. I'll do it. <laughs> Quick coming at my cheat sheet. <laughs> uh, you said property and personnel. I move, uh, I move that we go into an executive session to discuss personnel matters pursuant to KRS 61810-1F and also to go into executive session uh, regarding per potential real property acquisition for which publicity at present stage might or would be likely to affect the value per KRS 61810-1B. We have a motion by Commissioner Terry. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Sears. <laughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. We are in executive session. Move we come back into regular session. Second. second. Motion to move back into regular session by Commissioner Cottle, second by Commissioner Terry. All in favor of moving into regular session say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. We are now in regular session. Madam 
Madam Clerk. Staff would ask that you hire Nicholas Truong to the position of wastewater operator with the usual probationary measures. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Terry, second by Commissioner Cottle. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Anything else, ma'am? No. Anything else, Mr. Scott? Anything else from the commission? Anything else from the advocate messenger? <laughs> <laughs> Anything from you, Mr. Hunter, seeing how you need to get life? <laughs> We're here, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion made second. and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. We're adjourned. <laughs>